Thank you. First of all, congratulations. Thank you. Well earned. Um, we have a very short period of time, so you want to hear him speak. So it's very simple. How the heck, in an industry where CEOs these days are averaging, I think, 3.8 years tenure in the job, how do you stay doing what you doing for so long? And please speak about what Bill talked about, which is my measure and your measure of really great executives is people want to keep working for them. And if they move, they want to work for them again versus the self-promoters who don't ever get anybody to go work for them again. Well, it's all about those, those individuals that work for you. And you know, I've got a, a group back here that works for us uh, with the Diamondbacks. It, it, it is about culture. It's really about culture. And our, our business, there's a lot of people here who are in baseball. It's a long season. It's a grind, as you know. Uh, and Bernie, I mean, when you're talking about a 162 game season, when you have spring training on top of that, hopefully playoffs after that, it's a very long season. And the majority of our employees are, are very young. They're just getting their, their teeth cut in our industry. And for me, it, it's making sure that it feels like family. It's a great place to work, great place to be, where they, they come in each and every day with a smile on their face. And that's what it is. I mean, it's really passion. Everybody in this room has a passion for sports, has a passion for their team. Uh, they wear the logo with pride each and every day, but you know, you gotta whistle while you work. And, and we say, if you truly love what you're doing, you'll never work a day in your life. And that's the way we feel. And I'm blessed to be in, in sports and have been for a long time, nearly 30 years. And um, to have the majority of our same staff there, which is very true, it's remarkable. I mean, when you have 350 full-time employees, and when you look at part-time and international, and you know, you've got 2,000 employees, Levy, who we had mentioned, there's Craig Appel there, thank you, Craig, and Eric, and, and you know, they're a part of our family too, which you can see on the video. But it's very important to make sure that everybody feels like they're a part of that team. And you know, my father, who unfortunately is no longer on this earth, but he had taught me from day one, make sure you know everybody by their name and, and make sure that you know every usher by name and every you know, janitor in that ballpark. And, and I've taken that to heart. Very fortunate to have started my career with the Dodgers years ago with Peter O'Malley. And the O'Malley family, they got it. They cared about culture. And at the time, that was the best place to work um, year after year. We've now been 11 straight years, best place to work. Um, you know, in, in, in Arizona, and the fact that we're contributing to that, that community, it's tough. Um, and the grind that we're in, and we live and die by the wins and losses, and Bernie and I were talking about that earlier, you know, it, it's not often that you're gonna win your, your conference or your division or, or make it to the playoffs, and fortunately right now, uh, we're in first place. Uh, we know that can change, and last year we were the coming. playoffs. The uh, we love the Rockies, they're our partners at Salt <laughs> River Field, Bernie. Um, but, um, you know, you, you, can't, you can't go into each season thinking you're going to make the playoffs. You actually have to think, uh, what do we do if we are not good? What do we do if, uh, how do we succeed if we're not winning? And go into each season thinking that, and, and it's the way you treat your people, your fans, um, it's the community. You know, we've given $55 million back to the community since our inception, just 1998. This is our 20th year. We're very proud of that. We realize that we're a community asset. We understand our social responsibility. We have to give back. That's what's so important. It's how do we win even when we lose? We say that all the time. How do we win even when we lose? And, and we feel like we're doing that. But it's, a, it's been a remarkable run. Uh, it's a group of individuals that love the organization. They love where they work. And, and they all get along. It's like family. But yeah. that's the most important part yeah. is uh, you know, keep a smile on your face, enjoy what you're doing, and do it together. I think you said a key word. One of the things we try and follow is we stole it from Greg Shiano at Rutgers, then he went to Tampa Bay, f.a.m.i.l. Yeah. Y. Dot. That's right. Forget about me, I love you. That's right. When you delegate, when you get so big and you delegate, and you have to delegate, how do you make sure, because I've heard some people who are uh, about their organization, people say, they're fantastic, their speeches are incredible, but move down the organization, it doesn't translate. Right. How do you make sure that culture permeates all the way down. That's a great point. And, and I think you really have to live by a mission. You have to have a true mission. And when I first came in, we needed some refreshing of our mission. We created what we call our circle of success, and it's our five main areas of focus. Uh, it goes back to one of those being culture, and that, that is one of our five main areas uh, of focus is culture. And I believe, uh, and I always say this, you know, the customer or the fan does not come first, and people kind of raise their eyebrows, really? the employee comes first, because if the employee feels rewarded, um, invested in, recognized, he and she will then in turn treat our customers the way that we expect them to. 
and, and they do. And I think as long as you invest in your employees, and there is no hierarchy, it's open door, and that, that's really the way it is. It doesn't matter what your title is at the Diamondbacks, you're as important as any VP in that organization. And they feel that way, but you also have to be able to develop those individuals too. Yeah. And, and when we talk about investment, it's not just spending money to make sure, like we did this year for the first time, we have a leadership academy where we're starting to, to, to train some of our individuals to be true leaders, because you put them in a role, all of a sudden they're a director or they're a manager and they've never really led. So we're teaching them leadership as well, but but investing in we care about your growth, we care about your development, and it's got to be it's got to be real, it's got to be genuine, authentic, practical, um, and then take pride in the fact that they can move on elsewhere and become leaders in other organizations and other industries. Yeah, no, that's a great point. I think um, we've taken the Disney profit, loyalty profit chain yeah. and put it in our own words: we're a leaders first driven organization. You are too, because the leaders are the ones that change that culture and keep it going. And the last question, given the time we have, is very simple. We're already done. Okay. Yeah. You know. Hey, they give you the award and say thank you very much. You know? <laughs> You've had yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> well, by the way, when you get a visionary award, it just means you're old, and that's what that, that's what's happening. No, I, I always I always say it means they must think I'm about to die. They want to give <laughs> exactly. me an award before before I go out the door. I read the bio and it said, you know, <laughs> consider the future leader in the organization. It's been saying that in my bio for 25 yeah. years. So. No, it's good. Yeah. Keep it there. Oh, sure. And by the way, keep the picture of you at 35 as well. <laughs> keep, keep keeps you young. <laughs> my kids laugh. Yeah, they look like that in 10 years. <laughs> so here's the big question. Baseball, like you said, 162 games. I used to go, you know, between the Rockies and then uh, Pirates first, and the Rockies. I'd go to at least 100 baseball games a year. Yeah. You know, with All Star Game, with post game, with road trips that we'd have with sponsors, volunteer sales group. How the heck do you keep? Because you are the chief culture officer as well as the president. How do you keep your spirit up and everything else? And I told you the story just right down the street here, in 1900 Marietta. Uh, Hawks and Thrash's first year here with, you know, Vernon Phillips Arena, and the Hawks are, we, we get rid of all the high-priced players, we, we win 13 games and lose 68, and the Thrashes are supposed to be our star, and the NHL's on lockout for the whole year. And I'd get in the elevator and the kids would be, hey Bernie, we almost won last night! And I'm sitting there thinking, we got killed, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> and I stayed up till 2 a.m. for a West Coast game, and I have to be the pumper, I've got to be the chief culture officer. How do you do it in baseball? Well, there's so many nights in the bullpen. It, it's tough. It definitely is. But again, it goes back to our employees, who we call team players. They love the place they work at. And you know, two years ago, we we were not very good. But you would never know that going into the ballpark each and every day, Bernie. I mean, people had smiles on their faces. They love working there, and that's so important in what you do. The relationships that we have, and again, that's part of culture. The relationships that we have with our suite holders, with our corporate partners, with our season ticket holders. It's the same relationship that we have indoors and it, you know, in, in, inside our walls. They love being a part of that organization and that is so important. We all have a positive attitude, but again, what can we control? We can't control the wins and losses, but we can control the fan experience. We can control the way we treat our employees. We can control the, the community investment and the impact that we're having on that Arizona community. That's what you feel pride in. And there's little things you can do. We have a lot of great culture initiatives. Uh, whether we have quarterly outings or we take the entire organization to San Diego for our series there or, you know, we, we give two weeks off during the holidays, paid time off or, you know, every it seems like once a month or twice a month I'll give a Friday off to the, to the employees because they've been working so hard. That's all great. But if they truly love, again, what they're doing, they're never going to work a day in their lives. And they take pride. You know, we've got uh, a vice president back here, Graham Rossini, a lot of you know, and, and my office I can look out onto the concourse and I'll watch him walk by and he's not doing it because I'm watching but he'll pick up a piece of paper off the concourse and throw it away. That's the pride that this organization has and it reminds me, you said Disney too, Russ Amaral who's here, another vice president of ours, I, I remember when I took over um, in Arizona and I, I was over and over I'd say to Russ, boy you go to Disneyland and it's spotless and they take such pride in their work and I said you know just watch someone drops popcorn and out of nowhere some little guy in all white comes over sweeps it up and they're gone. And I've seen it over and over to the point where Russ and his facility staff are like, oh, gosh, yeah, we know, we get it, we get it. And so we have a President's Council, which is made up of our Employees of the Month and, and some of our VPs, and we take a trip each year, and we went to Disneyland that first year, and I said, you watch. As soon as someone drops popcorn, someone's going to come over and spend, in fact, let's buy some. So I spill it, they come over, sweep it, I go, you see that? That's unbelievable. So we had a Saturday day game one day, we're on Fox, and I'm in my office and I'm looking out, I, you know, floor to ceiling glass, looking down on the concourse, and I look down, 
And it happens. And someone drops popcorn, and out of nowhere, some of our facilities folks come over, sweep it up. I'm like, Ugh! So I go over to my computer, and I write Russ, and I said, Russ, it just happened. And I write a couple other people, and I said, someone dropped popcorn. They came over. They swept it up within like 10 seconds. And I'm waiting for a response, and Russ writes back, yeah, we know. We staged it. But, <laughs> That's the beauty of it. You know, it's, it, everybody on the same page. We love what we're doing. But the work-life balance is so important to your question, Bernie. It is such a grind, and we have so many hours that we put into this life and into this industry. You have to take time for your family and friends, and, and it goes quick. You hear that. You know, we were just talking about my youngest is now a, a rising senior, and she's going to be playing soccer at, at Emory. I've got one that, you know, finished college. I've got one that's in the midst of college. And we did a really good job uh, of raising those kids at the ballpark, and you really have to, or mm -hmm. if you're at the arena or stadium, wherever you're at, make sure if you have a young family or you have a family, bring them to you. Uh, and my wife was great about that. She would take our three kids and bring them to the ballpark so we could all spend time together. And uh, that, you know, it was a part of their life. And, and baseball is so tough. Uh, I often say it doesn't become a part of your life. You become a part of it. And so you have to make sure that you include your family as well and balance it. Thank you, my friend. Congratulations. Thank you. 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 you. Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank with this kind of success starts with humility. This man is Thanks, humble sir. and he's brilliant. Thank, Thank you. you, my friend. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.